share as much as possible. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to have a slight amendment in our program. And uh, the amendment is going to be not in the itemization, but in the presentation. We are going to have a presentation of the draft Uganda Youth Political Memorandum. This was supposed to be done by Mr. Emmanuel Kitamirike. However, we are amending something very slight there. And so, we are going to have a gentleman who intends to be one of the next legislators in the period 2021-2026. Not on a constituency ticket, but as a youth MP. He tells me he strongly believes he will make it because he has tried to reach out to many of you and you have promised that you will vote for him. That gentleman would like to be an, an MP for the young persons from the Eastern region. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together to welcome Mr. David Bala, who is going to present a draft Uganda Youth Political Memorandum. Mr. David Bala. Uh, thank you very much for that wonderful introduction. Uh, the chair of uh, uh, IPOD, the Honorable Asman Basalidwa, and um, the uh, country director of NIMD, and the executive director of uh, Public uh, Policy Institute, and uh, honorable colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Uh, my name is Bala David, and uh, by the grace of God, I will be honored to be a member of parliament 2021-2026, representing the young people from uh, eastern Uganda. I come from a small village called Lambala, translated as Sleep, in Luwuka district. And I am honored to uh, present the youth, the Uganda Youth Political Memorandum. Um, and I hope that we all have a copy to, you know, read through. And it says, We, the youth of Uganda, recognizing our constitutional right to actively participate in and shape the governance of the country, committed to contributing a democratically governed country based on the rule of law that fosters the principles of equality and social justice, exercising our constitutional right to determine the form of governance of our country and having fully participated in several policy and legal reform consultate, consultative processes, noting that we constitute 8.6 million, representing 22.9% of the overall population and 50% of those eligible to vote, Acknowledging that youth are central to Uganda meeting its national development aspirations. Reaffirming the existence and obligation of government to serve the will of the people. Do hear by adopt and give to ourselves and our posterity this Uganda Youth Political Memorandum this 27th day of August in the year of 2020 as follows. The Electoral College system. We demand that each region in Uganda be represented by two youth members of parliament, one of which must be female. Youth in Uganda are represented by only five members of parliament, yet they constitute 8.6 million Ugandans, that is 22.9% of the total population, which translates to approximately 46% of those eligible to vote in the 2021 general election. 
Unlike other special interest groups, youth are disproportionately represented in the various political structures, which has hampered effectiveness and accountability in representation. For instance, the multiplication of districts from 39 in 1995 to over 140 in 2020 has, enab has enabled a fair representation of women in the national parliament, while some other groups like the UPDF estimated uh, to be around um, 100,000 in number is represented by 10 members of parliament. In addition to the four regional uh, youth members of parliament, um, youth are also represented by the national female uh, member of parliament whose constituency is a whole country making it logistically expensive. This demand is to the attention of the Speaker of Parliament. B. We demand that the youth electoral college system be abolished and replaced with adult suffrage. The electoral college system, which is used to vote for youth members of Parliament and local government councillors, deprives youth the opportunity to directly vote for their leaders and is neither used as an avenue for interest aggregation and nor accountability by youth leaders. Ahead of every election, little is done by the Electoral Commission to provide the necessary information and logistical support, making the system a ground for manipulative politics and denying the youth the opportunity to make informed choices. For instance, while the Electoral Commission in its 2021 election Roadmap committed to conduct workshops for special interest groups to sensitize and create awareness about the electoral processes. This was never conducted, denying the youth timely and certified information regarding the special interest group youth committees elections, youth committee elections. This demand is to the attention of the Speaker of Parliament and to the Electoral Commission. Part two strengthening youth political participation. We demand for youth affirmative representation up to 40% in political parties and organizations' governance structures. Youth are not adequately represented in key governance structures in political parties, despite their demographic uh, significance and activism in political party processes. Several party constitutions have lacunas and do not fully recognize and provide for youth structures and representation across the governance structure. structures. This demand is to the attention of the Speaker of Parliament, the Electoral Commission, and uh, political party leaders. B, we demand for a reduction in the Electoral Commission nomination fees for youth running for President and Parliament. The nomination fees set by the law for those intending to stand for president and member of parliament are high for majority youth and limit the candidature of many deserving, youth, deserving young people. This demand is to the attention of the speaker of parliament. C. We demand for scrapping of nomination fees for youth at party primary elections. The nomination fees set by some political parties for youth intending to stand for president and members of parliament and member of parliament are high for majority youth and limit the candidature of many deserving young people. This demand is to the attention of the political party leaders. Number D, we demand for a standalone ministry for youth affairs. The, young, the youth, despite their numerical strength, and vulnerabilities are clamped under the Ministry of Gender, Labor, and Social Development, which is under-resourced and overburdened by its huge constituency of children, workers, women, elderly, and persons with disability. This demand is to the attention of the President of Uganda and the Speaker of Parliament. E. We demand the establishment of a young women in political parties leadership academy. There are low levels of subscription of young women 
relative to young men in political parties, which, among other factors, underlines male dominance. Young women are not technically and logistically empowered to fully participate in political parties. This demand is to the attention of leaders of political party, parties. F. We demand that the National Youth Council is mandatorily held at least twice a year as an interest aggregation and accountability forum for, year, for youth leaders. Once elected, youth leaders at various levels neither consult nor account, for the, uh, account to the electorate. For this reason, it is necessary for the government to facilitate the convening of the National Youth, the National youth Council at, at least twice a year with sufficient number of days. This demand is to the attention of the Speaker of Parliament and the National Youth Council. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, that is a presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. David Bala, for taking us through the memorandum. Ladies and gentlemen, our next item is going to be uh, a plenary discussion. And in this plenary discussion, what we would like to do is we are seeking a consensus. The issues we have here are an aggregation of salient aspects of youth political participation from the east, the north, the central, and the west. However, before moving it to the next level, we wish to agree, all of us, and iron out the potential differences that there could be under this uh, draft. I, want, I will be leading you in this process, and what we are going to basically do, our approach is, we are going to go through item by item and have a discussion. Um, I'd like to have two liaison officers here. Two liaison officers are going to be helping us to move the microphone as we discuss. So we are going to begin looking at what is that aggregation when it comes to the electoral college system. And uh, that's on page two, the electoral college system. Our, our discussion is going to be confined to majorly page two and three. Majorly page two and three. Uh, please, the liaison officers, two liaison officers, may I have you here? Okay, as they come, let's look at item 2.1, specifically A. We demand that each region in Uganda be represented by two youth MPs, one of which must be a female. And the, our discussion or our point of reference there is that we only have five MPs, and yet by the voting block, uh, the constitution of the young people is 8.6 million, which is 22% of that voting population. Now, this translates into 46% 40, of those that are eligible to vote. And we are saying that unlike other special interest groups, there is disproportionate representation for the young people in the various political structures, which has hampered effectiveness, and accountability. So we are saying that we want to see each region. So we are saying in, in addition to the four regions, North, East, Central, and West, um, we also have one national female MP. So we need to discuss and agree what is it that is going to work for the young people. The current system is 
we have a regional MP for the four regions, and then we have a national woman MP. Okay? Omakech, you are going to be that side. Asmat, please, um, to move the microphone around. And I would like to request that... Um, pick a microphone from here. That because of COVID, these gentlemen will hold the microphone for us. Okay, so uh, these two staff are going to hold the microphone for you. However, I was being whispered too that they feel they are threatened because as you'll be speaking, you'll be speaking right in front of them as they hold the microphone. So you may give them a different strain of the virus. And uh, we are agreeing that except in those instances where you have a specialized microphone, uh, an unmovable microphone, speak with your mask on. Speak with your mask on. There's a second microphone here. Speak with your mask on so that the person holding the microphone for you does not feel threatened with the potential extinction that may arise from a strain of a virus you may carry or otherwise. Okay, so what are our views? Are we, are we in agreement with pushing forward this demand of each region being represented by two youth MPs, one of which must be a female? Now you realize, by the way, that when we're moving around, there were some views. Some were saying, okay, Bukedi is a, re a sub region, uh, Karamoja is a sub region, Bunyoro is a sub region, Ruenzori is a sub region. Buganda sub-region, but what was um, what spoke or stood out the most was the four regions remain, but then we have a female and a male representative under each. What are your views, ladies and gentlemen? Let's have by show of arms, a gentleman in green. I don't know which party. Uh, gentleman in green. Uh, then we have number two here, Asmat. We have number two in the front here. Uh, we have a gentleman uh, the other side wearing a green tie. Number three, we have. I'm not seeing, I'm not seeing ladies. We have a gentleman there. And, oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, the lady number four. We have a gentleman number five and number six. And then we'll close that. Each one of us is speaking for at most. And please respect. At most, 45 seconds. Thank you. Number one. Sorry. Please don't be tempted to hold the microphone. Uh, thank you so much. I would like to, like to appreciate that. He, of course, this also increases the representation. But as central region, our proposal was that each region is being equated to a district of two constituencies. Let's say central, central east, and central north to have two constituencies that is having two youth MPs and then the regional female youth MP, to have three youth MPs from each region. Thank you. That was the proposal of the central region. But when we compared it with, uh, with what other regions were proposing, this one seemed to have been more popular. Okay, gentleman number two. So we have heard and it's been captured. Gentleman, who is number two? Oh, it says number two. So much a protocol observed uh, looking at, at this presentation the air part of it, it is actually good that we get and send the two uh, youth representatives to parliament uh, per region this will be a good move but with the time we will also think of getting representatives in the sub-regions. So I feel members for now, it is good and necessary that we take a step and send two uh, youth representatives to parliament. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. So you are in secondment of 
uh, the draft as it is. Number three, I think number three. Yeah, num um, number this is number four. four. Number three must be the gentleman there in green. Asmat. Asmat. Come over here. The lady in green. For yeah. Uh, I want okay. To um, I think for purposes of capturing our our um, proceedings, I want to request that when you're speaking, you follow my example and stand. Thank you. I, it would also be interesting to tell us your name, the region, and the political party for which you... Uh, yeah, you surely I was going to do that. I am Okoler, Okoler, Opiolo Amanu from Palisa. I belong to the Democratic Party. And uh, I will maintain my position such that it goes on record that while we were in Imbale, I opposed honorably the view of increasing the number and my argument, which I do still maintain, is that the issue is not about how many members we have, but rather the quality of debate. I am looking at, uh, I'm looking at a parliament, not as an area where you go and do manual work, work that requires energy. So one person can represent a region. Lastly, I wish to bring to the attention of the honorable member and the chairperson of iPod. Actually, I thought the speaker is going to be here such that I can tender this view to her. The law as is in Uganda today, you cannot recall a member of parliament because we are not under a movement system. Now that one has got an implication. However much we increase the number of representatives that we have, we cannot hold them accountable. So my view would be, if we are taking this position, if the, if, if, if the, the majority is taking the position granted, be that as it may, we should also include a provision whereby if the member that we have sent does, do, does not serve to our expectation, we can have an avenue of recalling that person. Right, I think the honorable you. member can consider that. Probably he can table that on the floor. I thank, thank you very much. Thank you very much. That's very interesting. Um, so you are proposing that, we, that in the final draft there is a proposal for holding a, such leaders accountable. And uh, in case uh, need arises, they can be recalled by their constituents. Thank you. The lady from Kasese. Thank you so much. I'm called Benedetti Businge Omulibanda, a Democrat from Kasese District, aspiring member of parliament of Songora County South in the race with men. And for the first time in Kasese District, I may be part of the a few who have stood in a constituency. Um, in secondment of this, I am standing firm that at least we should have two female representatives in a region, in each region. First of all, remember we have been leaving the female or the women behind in this. Because in the five um, representatives, there has been a few of the women being brought on board. So when we, when we accept to bring two members from each region, at least it is balanced. And in the long run, we should think about sub-regional representatives because we are growing, we are very many, and it is documented that uh, we are taking that strong position of being 8.6 million. You will realize that a region is too big. At the end of the day, some of us don't know our representatives at regional levels. Therefore, we need to access our representatives and our views should be clearly represented after sharing with our 
representatives at regional levels and at sub-regional, then to the district and local levels. Thank you so much. My name was again, Benedetto Businge Omulibanda from Kasese District. We Thank shall you. Be, uh, Thank you, Benedetto. Um, you're very firm on your proposal. Before we go to the next speaker, before we go to the next speaker, because we have two left to close this item, ladies and gentlemen, while our plenary discussion was going on, we were joined by a prominent member of the Ugandan community. That person I would like to introduce to you this time is Mr. Leonard Molekwa. Mr. Leonard Molekwa.